Hey, happy Hey-o. KOTG Tuesday. Oh, what's up, everybody? Season three. Season three. What's Can you happening, that? fellas? Yeah, still recovering from last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. a late one, to be honest. <laughs> that was a long one. Yeah. And, and like Oli said, if we haven't got your information yet for the giveaway, shoot us a message at KOTG or reach out to one of us personally so we can get that prize out to you. Definitely. I think yep. we got most of them accomplished, but there is a few missing, I believe. Yeah. Well, yep. I decided to wear my shirt because you guys all know I was at the airport last week, so I didn't get to wear my shirt, but I got my shirt. I got my new beanie on. I like I got it. my KOTG beanie, so loving it. That Shout out sweet. to Brian for that new uh, the new episode cover, the new graphics up there, man. It looks good. I like it. Kicking off the, the new season with a little something, a little something different to start off the show. Yeah, changing it up for season three. So if you yeah. guys will notice, our thumbnails change each season. So that's our new one. I like one hundred one. Beautiful. Who? You know that KOTG logo looks a lot bigger in this picture than it did. I think. Yeah, I yeah. We talking about that. That's what she said. Oh, mm-hmm. hey. It's all Here we go. <laughs> Starting <laughs> early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that number one star rating for uh, dirty jokes right? <laughs> or into Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great information, but it's too, too. Uh, what was it? Yeah, dirty jokes or something like that. So I was like, well, you know, you get what you get. You know, that's us. Eighth grade. Hey, so shout out to LTZ. Uh, Farm Dad uh, said he must have fiber internet because he does not miss a week and getting in there first. So. <laughs> There's <laughs> got to be some LTZ. internet, some internet hub out there in Jersey where like his house is like the very first one out of that hub, and he just like he's like 30 seconds ahead of everybody else. I don't know. He's on he's a land like connection with Zach exactly. Right now, yeah. So as soon as he doesn't Zach use Wi-Fi, live, <laughs> he's yeah. like, I wonder if he's on his phone and if he's just quick with his fingers or if he's like on his computer. I don't know. I don't know. I guess yeah, what I'd ask if he's be that fast. Quick yeah. as with his fingers. So, <laughs> yeah. And like you guys said, there's a couple people that um, I need information from whoever won a forefather shirt and or a Tuckahoe hat. Uh, they got to message me so I can pass that information along. And you got to tell me if you got a Turf Dad shirt and you want something different and what your size is along with your address so I can send that off to forefathers. I'm about to go make a fake account and message you. <laughs> that was me. That was my name. I mean, listen, there was like there was like five shirts, and I only have one person that's messaged me. So we're like, oh hi. Somebody reached out to me. I'll have to see if I I don't remember if I sent you their info or not. So I got I got somebody who has he was no, it was the calendar. I don't know if, if I gave you the calendar or not, but uh yeah, anyway, yeah, we're we're working through it. Um, we'll probably have to take inventory and see kind of what what's we got so far because yeah, I definitely uh yeah, there's a lot we gave away, so <laughs> we got to figure out who's got what, who won what. Hey, so a uh, shout out to Abigail Frost is in the chat. I know she's a uh, a fan of our guest tonight that we'll get to here in just a second. So oh, yeah. she does have some. I want to say hi to her. She's a she's got um, a grasshopper. Yep, she does. So, uh, but yeah, we do have an awesome uh, guest on tonight. Actually, one of our first mower companies on, but. We all know the drill. We like to grab a glass and glass. keep off the grass first. Tea. Nice. Would you go grab a glass, Mike? <laughs> all right, Zach, do you want to introduce our uh, guest tonight? Yeah, we have Michael with Grasshopper Mowers. And then I'll pass it to you, man. Um, thanks for coming on with us. Like Brian said, you are our first mower company. And um, yeah, <laughs> we, we're looking forward to it. So, yeah, if you want to tell us who you are and what you do. Absolutely. So, yeah. my name is Mike Simmon. Um, I'm in our marketing department at Grasshopper Mowers based in Mound Ridge, Kansas, which is a really small town in central Kansas. So, uh, rural farm country is where, is where we're at. I personally live in uh, Wichita, which is the largest city in Kansas. It's not Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas is really small, actually. There's a bunch of suburbs that make up that whole metro area, but it, it is a much bigger metropolitan area than Wichita, let's, let's be honest. Um, anyway, so we're based in, based in Kansas, and 
Uh, we've been making mowers for more than 60 years. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to our discussion this evening about all things mowing and grasshopper and whatever else we talk about. So I think before we got started, I wanted I told you guys that I wanted to kind of go through some brief history of the company. And yeah, because it's, it's just a, a really neat story. I'm sure that, that most, um, most people that, that are, are familiar with zero turn mowers or the farming industry will appreciate, you know, some of the things that, that we'll go over in that. So, um, it's a grasshopper is a third generation family owned company. Um, I'm not part of the family, although I am part of the, the greater grasshopper family, but I'm not blood relation. Uh, it was started by a gentleman named Elbert Guyer back in, I guess the company was actually founded in 1958. So you can do the math for, for more than going on. This year would be what, 66 or 65 years. I can't so, do math. So that they need um, a mower in 1958? Uh, no, not a, not a mower. We'll, we, okay. we'll, we'll get there. Uh, but at the at the very at the very beginning, Elbert was a uh, a custom harvester up through the plains. So he'd start in Texas and he'd go north with the harvest. Uh, you know, and he, it was row crop, you know, corns, grain, corn grains, um, you know, that kind of thing. And he'd go all the way up in Canada. And uh, but you know, springtime, summertime, harvest time. The wet, you're at the mercy of the weather. You're at the mercy of the moisture in the crop. Uh, so if it's, if it's too dry, that's no good. If it's too wet, that's no good. Uh, so he found that he was either camped out for too long in one place and wasn't able to get to the next place. And the, the grain or whatever they're harvesting sits too long in the field, that's no good either. Anyway, he was like, I got I to gotta come up with a solution for this. I can't just be wasting all this time uh, just sitting around waiting or whatever. So he developed a uh, portable grain dryer. This is what he originally invented. That was his first thing. And it was something that he could load in the back of a pickup truck or onto a trailer and haul with him from, from place to place. And this was, I mean, this was unheard of back in the time because uh, I mean, you had grain dryers. They were, they were huge though. You had to get the, the crop out of the ground and then you had to get it to the dryer and you had to do it in large batches, but this was a small batch grain dryer, small enough to be portable. And so he could take it to the field. They could cut and people are thought they were crazy for cutting when it was too wet. It's like, no, don't worry about it. We're going to cut it. We're going to throw it in the batch dryer. And then they were able to just, you know, they were able to do their thing in a much more efficient and uh, effective mm -hmm. manner. And as he was making his rounds up and down, uh, people were taking notice of this and like, I want one of I want one of those. Can you make me one of those? And so he eventually got to the point where he started making them. Uh, and then that's when the company was incorporated. That's what he originally started making was these portable batch grain dryers. And uh, since then, though, we don't make those grain dryers anymore. We made those for a number of decades. There's still a lot of them in use in uh, the developing world, Africa, mm -hmm. South America, uh, Asia. Uh, we still support parts for them. Amazingly, we don't, but we don't do any, you know, new build or manufacturing of any of those large assemblies. Um, in the mid 1960s, there was a gentleman who was uh, developed his own mower using the, the hydrostatic transmission uh, technology, which we're all familiar with now, but it was more for large ag at the time. And he created his own zero turn mower just for his own personal use. Uh, and he called it the grasshopper. Um, and it was in around Mound Ridge. The company had relocated from northwestern Kansas to Mound Ridge, which is more central, closer to the interstate, closer to rail, uh, just for transportation and supply chain stuff. Um, and he came, he had a similar experience. So he created this thing. And then his neighbors and others around him were like, hey, can you build me one of those? Can you build me one of those? Soon enough, he was unable to keep up with demand of, of uh, manufacturing. Came to came to Mo, Mo Ridge Manufacturing is the parent company of, of Grasshopper. So he came to the folks at Mo Ridge and said, "Hey, can you help me out with manufacturing? I need some fab. I need some weld. Uh, sure, no problem. We'll we've got extra capacity." Uh, eventually, got to the point where we were making so much material and it wasn't moving. He wasn't selling them fast enough. 
uh, that we are like, we're sitting on all this raw, we're sitting on not only all this raw material, but all this finished material and we need to, we need to move it. So uh, in 1969, they bought him completely out of the, of the mower and uh, started making the mower, the grasshopper mower was incorporated as part of a, a subdivision of, of uh, Mower Ridge Manufacturing. And then the rest is history. We've uh, been making these mowers since, well, before 1969, but officially the date that we put on all of our logos and gear and stuff like that is 1969, because that's the date that it was incorporated. But it goes back to, I think they had the logo, the, the grasshopper logo was hand drawn by a high school student that the owner just happened to know and she was an art, art artisty person. And she just came up with the logo back in like the 64, 65. They've got a poster uh, of that hung up in one of his uh, little shops that, that had, that had it on That's there. So cool. It's pretty neat. Um, pretty neat backstory. Uh, but then, so we started making these mowers and uh, we already had a distribution channel through farm and ag with the dryer. So that's where we, got the, the primary uh, start with, with distribution of the mower. I mean, because a lot of the same people that were interested in um, Mr. Stuckey building them uh, uh, his mower, his grasshopper mower, they were farm, ag, uh, rural types that had a lot of land and, and didn't want to spend a lot of time, but they didn't want to push mow it for crying out loud. So they, they, they saw the, the need for a, for a zero turn rider and so we started distributing and selling through Ohio, Indiana, the Midwest, Kentucky. Uh, those are still some of our our uh, our biggest volume states. But you know, since then we've got a large presence down into the southeast uh, and up into the Dakota, the Dakotas. And then you mentioned Abigail in the chat. She's in the far the farthest point northwest you can get in Washington State, like literally pretty much Canada. Um, you know, so we're all right, we're all there. And then, you know, behind me, I've got this map of the world. Um, we, one out of every 10, I think it is grasshopper mowers that roll off our line is destined for an export market. So we're in like 40 or 45 different countries around the world as well. So the big presence in Europe, Australia, and, um, South Africa. So it's awesome. So that's a quick history. Um, we can, we can go back and, and touch some of the points. But uh, one, of the, one of the things that's really cool about our brand or as about our product that, that some may not know is that a lot of the things that you see on zero turn mowers now were innovated in Mound Ridge in, in, <laughs> in our factory. So for one, um, well, for one, the zero turn technology. I mean, there's, there's us, there's this kind of um, fun kind of, I don't want to say he said, she said, because it's, it's hard to to document these things going back this far back in history. Uh, but there's this kind of fun rivalry between us and XL Hustler. They're only six miles down the road from us, actually. Um, wow. And so they're, they, they claim the first, we claim the first. Um, we get into semantics about, you know, the, the, the nuances of that. But so there was the, the hydrostatic ch technology was one thing. Uh, the next thing that uh, is the swing out levers. So when you bring those levers in and then you mow like that, we innovated that, and that's what you see on practically every zero turn now. A um, lot of what lot is of the hydrostatic technology. Oli was talking to me about the hydrostatic technology. What is that? Oli was talking to me about that at GIE, and uh... yeah, it's just the the counter rotation of the of the drive tires. So you know, one spinning mm -hmm. one direction, the other spinning okay. the other direction, and it's all based on pressures. Uh, they originally was all all of it now is is pretty well uh, done by. A lot of it's done by hydraulics. Um, you still have large manufacturers like Hydro Gear that have gear reduction drives, but you still have oil and pressure that, that move things. Uh, the, the, the original hydrostatic transmissions were chain drives. So um, if you see any of the original grasshopper mowers out there, which there aren't very many left, but if, if you do find one, they're going to have like a, ch a chain, like a bicycle chain. Like you can imagine the bicycle chain on your bicycle. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, in the, in the transmission, but so that, yeah, that's what fits, facilitates that zero turn. So you've got that counter rotating, uh, that drive counter rotating drive tires, um, you know, swing out levers. A lot of mower manufacturers have diesel mowers. We were the first to do a diesel mower back in the eighties. Um, we tried, we were one of the first to try propane. We still, we don't do propane anymore. because It's, it's not 
all that effective of a fuel source uh, for, for running uh, outdoor power equipment. Um, we've got a, the powerful deck on our, on our front mount decks lifts. That was a, an industry first. So there are a lot of cool things that we've done that, uh, that we're pretty proud of. Uh, that have you're, you're kind of talking about something like this industry yes exactly yeah that so <laughs> where cool. that deck folds That's up like that very easy maintenance compared to me having to pull my deck off every time i want to maintenance it yeah i've got a i i personally have a mid-mount mower so not like this um this would make cleaning out the and changing out the blades a lot easier so my dad and my father-in-law have the, have one of those. And my son is like, Hey, when can we get one of them? I'm like, well, when you can convince one of your grandpas to let go of their mower, <laughs> then we can get one. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, we've, we've done a lot to, to further the, the, uh, innovation and the leadership in this industry. Um, you know, we're not, we're certainly not the largest, uh, mower manufacturer uh, out there, uh, by volume or, or any other metric, but, um, there, there are a lot of things in this industry that are, uh, synonymous with our brand that, that I wouldn't say would not be around if it weren't for us, somebody would have done it, but are around specifically because our team of engineers and product development people, you know, put their thinking caps on and came up with something. So, um, that's pretty, that's a pretty cool thing to, to hang our hats on. Um, they always been zero turns. Yes. Yeah. We, we, and that's the only thing, that's the other cool thing about grasshoppers. We only focus on zero turn mowers. We don't have, uh, we don't have like a lawn tractor. We don't have push mowers. We don't have, uh, which in some ways is, um, I don't, I don't want to say a detriment, but, uh, it, it, it certainly, you know, pegs us in a, in a certain vertical, but we do that. We do that vertical really, really, really well. So, um, one of my questions was going to be when you guys going to get into the push mower market, you know, but I guess I can't ask I that can, now. <laughs> I can guarantee you that those of us who don't need 60 plus inches, what do you got for me? <laughs> you got a 41 inch. Um, I saw that. I was looking like, what's their smallest deck? I was trying to find the smallest one you guys got. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that our engineering team has come up with something like that, but you know, I, it, it'll never see the, I don't want to say it'll never see the light of day. I should never say that, but, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stock. There's a lot of, uh, investment in the zero turn riders. And now sure. we can talk about our new stand on later, but, um, in that zero turn technology that, that takes precedence over any, it doesn't really translate to a, to a small, probably small engine push mower. It's to totally different. So yeah, well, it'd be a different, it's a, it's a different, uh, it's different everything. I mean, it's a different yeah. engine. You don't have a transmission at that point. Right. It's completely different uh, tooling, and uh, you know. So yeah, it, it, it plus plus they they want to not 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 to knock anything. It, this would be the way we would do it. Is it would be the most expensive push mower out there, yes. a thousand <laughs> fifteen hundred dollars, and and not because it would be overpriced, it's because it would be overbuilt. Um, sure. Not, yeah. Not say sure. overbuilt from the standpoint of you know they they overdid it but they designed it so well but the fact yeah. that they designed it so well made it that much more expensive exactly so, yeah it makes sense be, so be when i um when i think of grasshopper mowers i think of different attachments and different things you can add to them and different uh yeah additives you can buy um is that something like how like that mower like i was just showing like can you swap that deck out for a blower or yeah can you... yeah uh, so any any front mount mower any mower with the deck out front that deck can be removed um and then from there the the, ver the the depending on the size of the mower that you have size of the engine size of the hydros um will depend on what you can add on to it so for example we've got this really cool one uh implement it's a turbine blower and it's literally uh not i think it's like 9,500 cubic feet of air per minute. It's wow. massive. Oh, I mean, wow. you think about it's, it I don't looks know, huge on the website. Yeah, 10 or right. 15 or 20, however many black backpack blowers at one time. <laughs> and this thing, you know, gets on it and it's like, it, it doesn't sound like a jet engine, but it's, it's just <laughs> pushing a lot of air and you can clear 
uh, sand traps. You can see clear driveways or, or sidewalks or, or parking lots or whatever. I mean, that's going to be, you're going to need some, some real power from the engine on that. So you can't get that on the smaller front mounts. Uh, you can get that on the bigger ones. So it, you're, you're limited to an extent on, on the implements on what, what size of the tractor, what we call the tractor or the power unit that you have. But yeah, every, every front mount mower can, can have that deck come off and at least have a dozer blade or a snow thrower. Uh, if you're in the snow territory, snow areas, uh, we have a back drive or a, a, a power back uh, collection system for every mower that we manufacture, um, as well as an edger attachment, which is like a disc edger. It's not like a weed whacker. It's not, okay. it's not independently powered. It's, mm -hmm. it's cutting as it goes, you know, it's knotted on the deck and it's cutting as it's going. So, uh, it's good. For yeah. I thought that. that thing was super cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really, it's really effective too. It, I, I've, I've seen it in, in action. It's like, that actually does a really amazing job. That's awesome. So, um, is there an aerator? We do have an aerator. Yes. Again, it would be a 40 inch or a, or a 60 inch. Some of that stuff we, we make some of it. We, um, oh, right there. source right from others. The, the aerator is a first products. Uh, product so oh, if you're first product that's products. what we use only right yes sir. Yeah, they, they make uh they make pull behind aerators as well uh, but ours is obviously that front mount that front mounted design and all of those uh, implements are especially if they're powered if there if there's any action to them like say an auger on the snow thrower or the aerator on the tines or the blower or the brush head on a on a broom those are all going to hook up to the the power takeoff, the PTO shaft on the, on the, um, the tractor. So, and it's really easy to swap those off and on. I mean, a matter of minutes, you take the deck off, you put the implement on and you're off to doing whatever it is that you set up to do. Yeah. That's awesome. with the, Go ahead. Elizabeth. With that aerovator, you can run it forwards or backwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you run it backwards, um, you're going to, you're going to, I don't want to say tear up, but if you're doing like a lot, if you're doing, if you need to do some prep work, like if you're got really compacted ground and you want to really make a good contact for your seed or your fertilizer or whatever you run, you run it forward first, get the, get, get the compaction broke up and then you can run it backward. And it's almost, almost like a tiller. It's not tilling, uh, mm -hmm. but it, but it kind of acts that way because it's, it it's more like forward. You know, it's, it's naturally wanting to go forward with the mower, but when you're pulling it backward, it's ripping, kind of ripping that yeah. stuff and digging some of that stuff up so you can get a, get a, get a nicer bed for your seed. That's cool. Yeah. That, that's, um, there's only a few more, like, like, you know, I think of I'm not trying to throw out competitors here, but, you know, I think of like a Ventrac and I think of like grasshopper, like of the only ones who like are very attachment friendly. Like when I think of them, I might be, mm -hmm wrong but just seeing them at trade shows and seeing videos and i think that's has a lot of value to it as far as even buying it for a homeowner like um i think that's cool yeah it's um the the, the majority of our customer base the people that buy our mowers are rural homeowners like i said with the, with the company history that we have uh where we were selling to farmers or rural acreage owners to begin with we've just kept that uh, that's been our primary market or primary customer base and so yeah a lot of those attachments that we make and that we sell are uh, any number of them or any any one of them could be utilized for a homeowner uh, if um, if they so chose especially we sell a lot of snow throwers we sell a lot of dozer blades we sell a lot of collectors those are our primary ones and then I don't know even how to start ranking the rest of them because a lot of the rest of those ones, the aerovator, the sprayer, the edgers, those are going to be people that are using those, uh, using those mowers more professionally, or uh, they, they work for uh, like an institution or say the, the city or the park system uh, that uses our mowers that have those types of attachments. So, um, but yeah, pretty much any, any of our attachments could be used in any environment for any purpose. Uh, in any place, which is really, really cool. So we've got anywhere from like myself, I have a mid mount, small mid mount, 100 series, 48 inch. It's overkill for my, for my yard. I only have a half acre, but Hey, 
I'm not going to buy any other kind of mower. And if I did, I'd get run out of my office. So, um, <laughs> the, so we've got anywhere from that to people who own five acres of, of ground, you know, wherever they live to people who uh, do it for a living. And the really, we've got some really cool internationally known customers. Some of you, you guys might know some of these people. Um, there's the white house in Washington, DC. There's the national mall in Washington, uh, Lincoln heard of them. place in <laughs> uh, or Kentucky. Um, I'm blanking on some others. There's, uh, uh, I mean, we could talk about the Kremlin, but I don't think that's a very popular subject right now, <laughs> but, uh, there's a lot of places, across, uh, there's, oh, um, there's one of these, it's not, it's not, it's not a place that's been featured on any documentaries or anything, but, but you know, those big like castles over in, over in the UK, oh, yeah. one of those big mansion houses, it's, yeah. really famous. it's got a lot of murals inside. It's really famous for all the paintings and everything. They use, they use a grasshopper for their grounds. So, um, hmm. So really hey, cool, cool. One stuff. question, real quick, with that, because mm -hmm. um, we know we're we're into our lawns big time, and you know we go after some stripes. So, do you guys have a stripe kit built into it? Does it lay stripes naturally, or yeah. um, is there any like uh, anything you got for that? There's not an add-on that uh, at least like a an attach or a kit or anything like that. We, what we do have, and, and you're not going to see it with any of these pictures that are floating around that, that on the website or anything like that, because it's, it's built into the deck. There's a, there's a, I'm going to not going to do it justice by describing it, but it's effectively a, um, a heavy duty, um, poly, poly, uh, uh, flap basically that, that is bolted on the back of the deck that as you're, as you're going along, as you're mowing along, that's going to flatten the grass out. Um, you know, the, the thing with the front mounts is so you, the deck is out front. So the deck is doing all the cutting and then it's laying all that stuff down. And then you've got the drive tires and then the tail wheels that come behind it. So some of, sometimes you'll see, especially with the front mounts, um, you'll see those tire marks kind of going with it, but they're still going in the same direction. So it's not like it throws off the, the, the aesthetic uh, too much you get the same issue with the, with the mid mounts where the drive tires are right back there, you know? So, but, but it's really, but the, the tail wheel in the, in the, in the middle of the stripe kind of makes it look a little interesting. Uh, but you can definitely tell when it's either been a grasshopper or like say a, uh, a, a Walker or a, an X mark front runner or something that's, that's done. They're all going to leave a similar type of pattern uh, behind, but yeah, so we do have that and they do, they really do a phenomenal job uh, right out of the gate of, of getting some good stripes. Uh, it's funny. We, we, because we have the, the uh, customer base, we do a lot of people that are mowing are not necessarily mowing the nicest grass. Uh, they're mowing a lot of scrub and field grass, sure. but yet we still get pictures from people who it's very clearly a rural setting. It's obvious that it's not like some really, really manicured fescue or whatever lawn. And it still looks really great. Uh, especially from like an elevated position and especially when the sun hits it just right, because it, you know, we do, our engineers do a good job of making sure that that deck does what exactly what it's supposed to do is cut the grass and make sure that it leaves a good cut, uh, a good stripe behind, um, uh, you know, so it can basically make crappy grass look good. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't, we don't need to have perfect pristine grass to make it look good. So, no, so yeah, I, I get a lot of people ask, you know, why do you go back over your stripes when you're mowing your lawn? And I'm like, I'm trying to get that, that real heavy contrast that I see on the side of the road and I'm driving down with these commercial mowers to get that, that suction and those big contrasty tire marks and everything. I'm trying to get that, man. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, yeah. I get a little jealous when I see these, these, these real nice stripes that last all, you know, they mow it once a month, but they're there all month long. as I'm driving by every day. Like, mm -hmm. You know? well, it's because they do it that same way all the time, which well, that too. Works, yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, it, it works, but you know, you, ideally, ideally you, you mix up your mowing pattern because that's yes. going to, I'm not a turf expert. You could ask somebody else about that, mm -hmm. but uh, from what, everything that we've read or that I've read that I know uh, if you, if you mix up your mowing pattern, at least on a semi-regular basis, you that that's better for the turf. It's not going to just, it's, oh yeah. it's like, it's like when you drive through Kansas uh, and I'm sure that you guys have similar similar uh, things that you see in your own environments. But when you're driving through Kansas, 
all of these cedar trees that you see that are out in the middle of nowhere that are windbreaks or whatever, they're all leaning in a northward direction because the south wind is so prevalent uh, in this area of the country that that all the trees are kind of growing at an angle. Mm -hmm. Or you can at least see that all the branches are kind of moving in one direction. It's almost sure. like it's almost like when you take a picture of it, that it almost looks like the wind is blowing, but it could be a <laughs> still day. Um, so if you are if you constantly mow your grass in the same direction, it has the same effect. So the sure. plant's going to grow kind of wonky. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt it necessarily, but you're going to have a healthier plant if you yeah. get it to grow kind of straight up. Uh, but yeah, if you if you go over it once and then if you've got the time especially if you're a commercial guy if you got the time to go over it again that's just going to accentuate the stripe for sure especially if you go over it the same direction so i just want to show off abigail's mower she's in the chat doing a, an amazing job of talking you guys up and answering some questions so just want everybody to kind of see what mower she's got with you guys oh yeah this is a 725d so so just for those who aren't familiar with the, the, the naming conventions that we use, a model 725D is a 700 series. So we've got several series, we have 100, 200, 300 and on. Uh, and then, um, so the 700 series here, it's a front mount mower. It's kind of the, it's kind of the mid size, I'd say the mid, mid full size front mount mower. So it's a 700 series. The 25 is the horse, technically the horsepower on this unit. So 700 series, 25 horsepower. The D is for diesel. Mm. Um, so uh, that's got a 25 horsepower Kubota diesel, three cylinder liquid cooled uh, Kubota wow. engine on it. Uh, and the Kubota, I mentioned the diesels that we, the, we were the first mower manufacturer to come out with a diesel engine and a mower. And that was a Kubota engine. It was a three cylinder Kubota diesel. It's the, effectively the same design as uh, 30, almost 40 years later uh, in this machine than what we originally put in, hmm. in the first ones that came out the line. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is our mantra. <laughs> um, so, hey, we uh, know but, a diesel mechanic too. So, yeah, we got one on the cast. All right. But you know, uh, somebody say that like the colors look ugly and old. But I think that look that just looks badass, and it looks like mm -hmm. you know it just looks like it's been through some stuff. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it yeah. looks like you you can you can see that 1958 generation in it, and mm -hmm. I like it. It's here to get the which, job done. Which right? Yeah. So one of our advertisements back in the day um, was your mower doesn't have to come in, or your your car doesn't have to come in flashy colors. What is your mower? Kind of thing, and, and this is this is dating the ad because there are some pretty flashy colors of cars now, uh, <laughs> and mowers, <laughs> and mowers, yes, and mowers. Uh, but you know, it's it still rings somewhat true. I mean, yeah, it's it, there are a bunch of mower manufacturers that have really really bright colors. Um, but here's the thing: it a, a twenty year old you you couldn't you could I could show you a picture of a twenty year old grasshopper mower and put it up next to a, a brand new one. And as long as that person has done a good job of, of keeping it clean, you know, not, not like waxing it every day. I'm not talking about that, but just, you know, some, some sensible maintenance. Um, you would really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the 20 year old one and the, the brand new one. Uh, just because those colors, um, you know, like them or love them, those colors have staying some staying power. They don't fade. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't really get dirty um, in, in a sense. And I mean, to be honest, there's no other mower manufacturer that has brown and tan. We own it. <laughs> True. So, there's there's uh, a lot. And of nobody else, red, nobody else wants to break into that space. So if you see a brown yeah. mower, it is a grasshopper. So well, yeah, and also, I mean, that's a branding. That's you know, there's it's a good branding tool because how many other companies are out there and they're like, okay, well, we're gonna field a red mower. Right. So now, if you're driving, red. if you're you know, yeah. say you're a, say you're a landscaper, right. And you're driving down the road and you're like, I'm in the market for a new mower. And you're looking at what other guys are using. And you're like, Oh, you got to kind of double take it almost, you know, sometimes. Cause it's like yeah. red, yellow, green. And <laughs> but it's like orange. I'd say green John Deere, maybe only. And then I don't think, and everybody else is like red, yellow, or orange. Yeah. 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 You're for your, for your primaries. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you see, you see tan and, you know, tan and Brown. 
yeah, it's just really, really clear what it is. Or I mean, you may not know what it is. And you got to, like you said, you got to take a double, do a double take. Yeah, but then you could Google like tan and brown mower. <laughs> probably be the first one to pop up, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, th- I mean, we've, we've fielded that question a lot. And of course, social media, uh, the people on social media, or at least some of the people on social media are uh, ruthless in their, their opinionated <laughs> commentary on anything. You don't say. So we've seen, we've oh, seen we, some pretty. A little bit about that we do. <laughs> Uh, in, in, innovative, innovative in themselves uh, commentary on our colors, uh, but you know, it it's not going to change. At least as far, as, I mean, it's not going to change wholesale. We're not going to go to like uh, an orange or uh, or a blue or anything like that. Uh, we've made some we've made some uh, changes along the way to kind of bring the aesthetic a bit more into the uh, you know kind of current. Uh, look of things but it by and large that that brown and tan i i personally would love to see more tan just because i love that tan that, that that tan color is awesome um but and it's, still, it's got a still it's got a it's got a, a classic uh feel to it so well i have a i have a burning question uh and this this may just show my ignorance but when it comes to like deck size and you guys are coming up with these different options, 41, 42, 52, 61, 72. Mm-hmm. How do you guys come on these like these oddball numbers? Why not 50, 40, 70, 60? Like what is, you know, is there any, is there any ra- you know, rhyme or reason to that? <laughs> I've always been you're curious. Like what is it, you know, Zach's got 60, but always got 61. What does that extra inch make a difference? Well, you know, why are they not all universally increments of, t- I don't know. Anyway, I was just curious like if there's a reason behind that. Yeah. These are our first mower company. I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't have a good answer for you in terms of why we have 61. Blade overlap. Say what? Blade, blade, blade overlap. overlap. I mean, it's just the way that, that our mm. um, engineers. How much they overlap in the math. Set, the, set yeah. the spindles. You know, it's, it's really more spindle placement than it is, okay, we're just going to make the deck one inch wider. <laughs> XMR's got 60. We're making 61, baby. Right. Let's go. <laughs> it I mean, because it doesn't work in reverse. It's like everybody else has 54. We're going to make a 52. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it, it has to do with, I, if I were, and I'm not obviously in our engineering department, um, and if I were, I wouldn't be talking to you guys because that would be a normal. But um, the, if I, from what I understand, it's, you know, we, we design a, uh, effectively what's called a deck carrier, you know, so that's the, the part of the machine that the deck well, gets carried by its deck carrier. And so that's your front caster tires. And that's what, fr- uh, uh, bolts up to the, the rest of the main frame, uh, like with the seat and the engine chassis and all that stuff. And so there's that, and they build that and then they say, okay, what deck, now we're going to make a series of decks for this and uh, we need to make sure that we line things up properly. And so uh, the way that they line that up with the chassis or with the deck carrier is going to determine, okay, if this is going to be a 52 or if it's going to be a 48 or if it'll be a 61, I think it was just, you know, our um, tire width or deck carrier width size just kind of dictated that it was going to be a 61 as opposed to, now we've got 72 and everybody else has pretty much everybody else has a 72. Um, the only oddball sizes that we have are really that 40 uh, that 52 and that 61. All right. That's, that's good enough. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take, take it. it. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah. Abigail wants us to ask about grammar seats. Grammar, grammar seats. Grammar yes. seats. Grammar seats. What's that? So uh, Grammar is a manufacturer. Uh, they are, I'm not sure where they're based. I can't remember where they're based, but they are a supplier for the industry. Um, so, cause obviously we don't make everything for the mower. We make a lot that's steel and uh, that's formed and, and that kind of thing. We even do our own wiring, uh, believe it or not. We don't buy any wiring harnesses from anybody. Um, but so seats wise though, we, we purchase seats. Uh, Grammar is one of those suppliers. They have um, a range of product options, but we, we buy their Primo or top of the line uh, suspension type seat. And so, and you can put that suspension seat on practically any mower um, that has the, the frame large enough for it. And I mean, it's like sitting on a cloud 
I mean, you, you, you want to be comfortable. If you want the most comfortable ride you can get, uh, you add that suspension, that grammar suspension seat on there. And it does an amazing job of just absorbing everything. The mower does a good job of absorbing, of absorbing shock and vibrations to begin with, but then you add that seat on top of it. It's just like riding on a cloud. Well, so you got, you got a walk behind and a, and a, and a rider or a stand on what's your other mower that you got? I got a X smart turf tracer walk behind. How's how's that seat feel? It's walk behind the walk. Behind. Oh, the walk behind. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's real. I, it, it's, uh-huh. it's very cushiony because the turf is thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you had one that you sit on too. Is that it? You well, just have to walk behind? That's a Ferris. That's okay. a Ferris. We need okay. to talk about those right now. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. I just have never had that the pleasure of like we're, you know sitting down taking a seat while I'm mowing. Oh, it does have a, a Kubota a tractor though, right? Kubota, yeah. It's got at least yeah. a Kubota tractor. Right. So happy birthday, fellas! Hey, happy, happy birthday! birthday guys. Two, years. Hey. Two years old today. Two years in, man. Mm. <laughs> hey, Mike, were you guys ever affiliated with Woods Equipment? Yeah, so we were um, for a few years. Um, Woods and I'm—I don't go back far enough to know all of this particular history, but but what I do know is that for a time, I believe in the mid '90s, uh, there were several years that uh, Woods contracted with us to basically build their mowers. So. Uh, there are a lot of woods mowers out there that look a lot like grasshoppers, only they're orange or orange and black or that kind of, of, that's kind kind of why I asked actually. Hey, what? (laughs) That's kind of why I asked is they they look very similar. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there is that, I, I can't remember exactly when that broke off and I don't remember now. Um, it was one of the other, it was another, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong by naming anybody, but it was another mower manufacturer. I'll just say that, that they, that they went to, uh, that continued because apparently they didn't have their own, their own manufacturing facility, which is kind of strange. It's odd. It's kind of an odd, odd deal. I'm not exactly sure how that came about or, or why it, um, why it ceased. Uh, but yeah, there, there were, there were a, a number of years there where we were making the woods and they looked very, very, very similar. Cool. So, but yeah, that's a, that might be um, a good segue into talking about, you know, the kind of, the, we've already talked a little bit about the range of the product that we have, but with all the implements and all that kind of stuff, but that's been primarily a front mount, you know, the deck out front conversation, uh, which is fine to have. That's what the vast majority of, of people that buy our mowers or buying those front mount mowers, the, the mower that Abigail um, mentioned on awesome. 725B. Uh, that's our number one seller. I mean, if, if, if we, if we looked at all of the models that we offer from gas to diesel, front mount to mid mount, now the stand on that we have, if we lined them all up and we counted up all the ones that we sold of each of those, then the, the most of, of those would be the 725. So, um, we just, we just do it that well. Um, so yeah, we've got the front mount, um, and then in the, so we, we started making those in 1969. That was the original design. Uh, that's what, that's also another cool thing that, that people don't necessarily think about is that that front mount deck, that, that deck out front of the machine, that's the, oris- that is the original zero turn design. And that's where mm-hmm. the term zero turn comes from. Because if you look, if you imagine we're looking at this thing side, you know, from the laterally here from the side, but if you were to, uh, if we were to put the deck down and then we were to rotate this to where we were looking from above, like a bird's eye view, we'd see the deck out front, you know, and then we'd see the tractor behind and then we'd see the tail wheels. And if that thing did a zero turn, it would make, uh, it would make a perfect circle within its own circumference. So it's that, that's that zero turn uh, mm-hmm. idea. Okay. So then, uh, then other companies started coming out with uh, mid-mount machines in the 80s and 90s, and we were still only front mount. We were still only front mount at that point. Uh, it was only in 2000, the year 2000, that we came out with a mid-mount mower. Um, so, so the mid-mount then has the deck you know, in the middle. That's pretty, pretty uh, 
uh, easy to understand. Uh, but then if you look at that same uh, kind of bird's eye view, now when that, when that mower does a, a, a zero turn, now it's just kind of, it's still making a circle, but instead of the entire mower being in the circumference or, you know, the, uh, now, now, the, now the, the mower's making the radius of the circle. So it's a slight difference. It's still a zero turn because you've still got that uh, turn on a dime type of, uh, uh, of, of motion, but it's, it's not a true zero turn. Uh, so you'll see, I mean, in some ways, uh, you'll see some of sometimes uh, when we when we put in our uh, on our website or in our marketing materials or, or or signage or something like that, we'll say a true zero turn mower. And that's that's that front mount concept. Uh, and then just in the last year, uh, we came out with yeah. See, this is a mid mount, and this is the sister uh, machine to that 725D. It's a 325D. So this is a 300 series, 25 horsepower diesel. It's still that Kubota three-cylinder diesel engine. Um, and we've got air-cooled Briggs. We've got air-cooled Kohler. Uh, those, are the other, those are the other engine options that we have available. And so then we, just in the last year, we announced the stand-on. And uh, that's been a long time coming. Uh, it's been in prototype mode for a number of years. And uh, we just, we, ju we just, we um, just, publicly uh, took it public at uh, GIE or I keep saying GIE I've been going to that show for so many years I should say that I've been at Grasshopper for 11 almost 12 years I worked for an ad agency that worked with Grasshopper prior to that for five years so been a long time in this industry and it's always been GIE I'll probably always call it GIE even though the Equip Expo people would really prefer that I call it <laughs> um, but so we brought it I think to it looks pretty aggressive I like it yeah, we brought it to Equip Expo, and there are some, uh, we, and it got a lot of great uh, response. We've been really, really happy with the response from the people that have come out to, because because there have been a lot of people anticipating this. And the last several years, we have fielded numerous, numerous calls and emails and, and, and requests from dealers and our current customers and others that are like, when are you guys going to come out with stand on? When are you guys going to come out with stand on? And um, so here it is. Um, they are in full production. This is not a prototype anymore. We are cranking these out as quickly as we can get engines. As you guys all know, and as most people who are probably watching this know, uh, the supply chain has really taken a hit in the last couple of years. And uh, our engine supply was one of those things that really uh, constrained us on, on production. Um, but thankfully that is starting to turn a corner, or at least it seems like it is. So uh, hopefully 2023 will be a, a year for, for getting some more machinery uh, out into the marketplace. But, you know, so someone could walk into a dealer and order this and within a you know, four to six week window, assuming uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, that's, that would be the, the time frame that we're looking at right now. Uh, so just in time for spring mowing season, uh, which is right around the corner. But we, we came out, we've got a 52 inch deck and a 61 inch deck right now on this because those are our uh, current deck sizes. We are exploring smaller deck sizes uh, for, you know, gates and smaller, uh, more, uh, smaller properties. I don't exactly know what that uh, range is going to land in, but it is going to be narrower. Uh, and I don't have a timeline on that. So we're just going to keep waiting for that until they say that it's ready. Um, what are some of the selling points uh, of the stand on mower as, as somebody who doesn't, you know, I don't use these kind of mowers. Is it the ease of hopping on, hopping off, making tight turns? Like what, what, why do people want this type of mower? Right. Yeah. So, you know, why would a sit down mower company that's been making mowers for sit down uh, riders for 60 years or 50 years better uh, come out with a stand on? And, and that's, you hit, you hit on a couple of the points uh, in your question. So, uh, the the ease of the ease of on off is a lot it's a lot easier to get off a stand on mower than it is a sit down mower uh, especially if you are mowing a commercial property of some kind or another and uh, there's a let's say it's a residential <clears throat> residential uh, yard and the homeowner has left their hose or some sort of uh, lawn ornament or something uh, that you would prefer not to run over they would prefer you not run over you would prefer not to run over. Uh, you can get off of it, off the mower really easily. 
move that, hop right back on and keep going. Uh, there's also uh, the, there are the, the space saving of, of this machine. Um, you know, this machine has the, the, the engine in the middle and then, and then the transmission is under that tower uh, where the controls are. And so that, that reduces the, the footprint lengthwise. Mm -hmm. So you can get more, uh, more units on a trailer. Uh, so, you know, where you could only maybe fit one front mount mower with the deck down. I mean, if you yeah. folded the deck up, sure, you could get some additional space, which we would love for, for more people to do that. But uh, most people just trailer the deck down. Uh, so that takes up space. That takes up extra space. You can get two stand-on mowers for every front mount mower on the trailer. That makes a difference, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so especially in, for commercial operators, that makes a big difference. Um, can you the pull up right on the website? Say what? The stand on. I don't know if there's any additional content on the website. Uh, there, I don't think there's any video or anything yet. Uh, there's some pictures. Um, yeah, there's that picture. Uh, there might be a spec guide uh, on there somewhere. Specifications. I, you, know, you have to click in. Yeah, expand some of that stuff. So uh, since you launched it um, at GIE, I mean, how has it been received? What kind of sales are you guys? Are you looking at really strong sales on it so far? Uh, well, as far as sales go, it's been kind of lid has been on that because of the, the engine supply issue, but gotcha. we've got a lot of pent up demand for it. Uh, we can't build the best. Uh, put it right. that so yeah, that was a question that Abigail had. So I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that we threw that out there. Cause yeah, I don't, I mean, being a private, being looking? a privately, uh, family owned company, we don't have numbers that we can sure. publicly share be, and I wouldn't know that what those are anyway, but, um, I do know, I do know that there's uh, uh, a lot of people looking at the response has been uh, incredible. Actually, we, we uh, came away from uh, Equip Expo with uh, double the number of what we would call an inquiry, people interested in, in, in our mowers. And, and most of those uh, were interested in the stand-on specifically. They, they'd come specifically to see that. So there's a there's a lot of demand for it, or at least a lot of um, interest and uh, ex people exploring whether or not this would be the next mower that they would add to their fleet. Um, you know, a couple so, of like Abigail so wants one. You got to um, give her. You got to give her like a discount for <laughs> hyping you guys up so hard. <laughs> she, I was getting ready to say there's there's three reasons to buy a stander. The first reason is it's easy on and off. Mm -hmm. Compact fitting on a trailer. And then as Abigail says, it makes your butt look really good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for some of y'all. <laughs> well, people, so people with the standards, like, I mean, people want the smaller deck to fit in the tight spaces, correct? Yeah, like gates. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest uh, uh, restrictions uh, for whether or not you're going to do, like, especially urban areas. Um, so, for example, Kansas City here in, in this region, Kansas City, for whatever reason, uh, stand on units or 52, 61 inch are their, their primary because a lot of their properties, uh, they're either not fenced in or the, or the places that they are fenced, they've got larger gates. Mm -hmm. So uh, like more estate type. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas, say, Houston or uh, St. Louis. Uh, other other areas of the country, you're going to have 32, 34, 36 inch gates. And so you can't, I mean, there's just no physical possibility to get anything wider than that through it. And if you've got any substantial area in that backyard that you've got to mow, then either you, then you have to have a, a separate piece of equipment, uh, whether that's a push mower or the, that's another zero turn rider or something like that. So having the having the option of, of a, of a narrower deck size for those, uh, for those areas would be, uh, of some benefit. uh, the question, the question that we're looking at and that we always have to look at any business, uh, has to look at is, you know, is that a, is there a substantial enough, uh, demand for our product in that area to justify mm -hmm. the, the build? Yeah. And, uh, but we, I mean, we are coming, as far as I know, we are coming out with a narrower deck size. It's just a matter of where it lands. It's going to be in the thirties somewhere, but I don't exactly where. Um, 
What's the biggest deck you have? 72. 71. 72. Oh, 72. 72. On the uh, standard. There. On the standard. Oh, on the standard. Uh, oh, I, I meant in general, but. Okay. Yeah. In general, 72. On the standard right now, 61. I don't know if we'll go oh, to wow. a 72 on the standard. That, that seems big for a standard. But yeah, actually, the the 60, the 61 inch standards are the ones that we're selling the most of right now. Is this 52 right here? Uh, that is a 52, yes. And what's cool about this stand-on uh, that, that, that really got a lot of attention, there are a few things that got a lot of attention at Equip Expo, and I'll talk about a couple of them. And unfortunately, we don't have <clears> – <throat> some, some of you guys may have seen video of this from the show, but I'll just describe it from this picture. So the, the, you circled the deck and the engine uh, before, and so that – both the deck and the engine and the transmission. The transmission is set just behind, you can't see it in this, in this image, but it's set just behind the engine. Um, the deck and the transmission and the engine are all moving on the same platform. So when, when you raise the, the deck height, uh, now the engine and the transmission are moving with the deck. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, it keeps your belt life from from wearing prematurely because as if you were to have the engine and the transmission stationary and then the deck was moving now your belt is is doing this as the deck mm -hmm. is and even if it's a small movement up and down that still causes wear so now mm -hmm. with the deck and the and the engine doing this at the same time now your, your belt is on a singular plane all the way through so that's important um the other thing is is that that helps that has helped us achieve a balance on this machine that quite frankly, I mean, and I'm not, hopefully as a marketing person, you're going to think I'm blowing smoke, but it, it literally uh, makes the balance of this machine uh, pretty much the best that you can get in a standoff. Uh, just because the way that we had, the way we had to figure out how to do that and keep the, the overall balance of the machine without getting out of whack. Uh, I mean, this thing will hold a hill like nobody's business. Uh, it'll, um, you know, the traction is phenomenal. Uh, you're not going to get any slipping. Uh, there have been, of course, the people that want to demo it are, they want to take it to the most extreme place that they could possibly take it. <laughs> and I've some, I've, I've heard of some pretty hair raising things. I'm not going to describe them on camera for legal <laughs> reasons. Uh, it didn't but... catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was unfortunate. <laughs> no, that's the, okay. So let's, let's come back to that here uh, real quick. Uh, put, a, put a pin in that because that's, that's the electric conversation. But um, the, the other cool thing about this mower is that the operator platform. So the, where the control levers are uh, that has a four and a half inch height, a, a variable height adjustment. So there's a nut right, right in the center of the, of the controls uh, to the back of the tower where it, it's the easiest with like a, 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 a cordless drill, but uh, you could do it with a, with a hand wrench as well, but you can get four and a half inches of adjustment and the entire tower is moving. Okay. So the controls are, and the lights and that grasshopper uh, uh, um, logo or that, that written out grasshopper there, that's all moving up and down. So if you're a shorter operator, you're only like five foot, two or something like that. You can set that all the way down and you can be comfortable. And then if you're an operator that's five, nine or six foot tall, you can get it all the way up to the top because your arms are probably longer and you're still going to feel comfortable. Whereas every other, mo every other stand on as far as I'm aware has a stationary tower. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's really, actually really cool. Yeah. I like that. Slick. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so, so that's, that's, those are the, those are the real, uh, that and the other thing is we have a, um, uh, a patented, and again, you can't see it from here because the engine is in the way, but we have a, uh, what we call a T drive. And you could, when we were looking at the website, there were some, you might've noticed that the models sometimes have a T after them. And that, that indicates the T drive. Our T drive is a tandem drive. It's a, the, the two pumps, you know, on those, on those hydrostatic transmissions, there's, there's a pump for each drive tire. There's a pump and a wheel motor for each drive tire. And historically they've been a separate pump and a separate wheel motor. 
we designed, we co-patented with Parker Hannafin a, a tandem pump. So you've got both pumps in one housing, one filter, one reservoir. So you've eliminated a lot of extra parts and <clears throat> belts and, and a bunch of other things. We direct coupled it to the drive shaft on the engine. So there's, there's no loss of power. It's a really, really cool um, uh, system. But we've got this T-drive in the standoff. And uh, that's another thing that's unique to, to, to our stand on to the rest of the industry. The rest of the industry is going to use a transaxle system or a pump and wheel, a separate pump and a separate wheel motor. So uh, that's another key, uh, key feature that's unique to us. Um, I mean, we can keep talking about the stand on uh, if you'd like to, but you know, there's the, 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 th the question or the comment was thrown out about the, 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 the fire at, at GIE. And I can tell you guys that that was an unfortunate event. I mean, when I saw that happen, I was outside, I was in our booth and I was talking with a, uh, with a guy who uh, was, we were actually, we were out there looking at the aerator and I'm like, Oh, look, that doesn't look good. And you see the smoke starting. And then all of a sudden the, the mower is just engulfed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I can tell you right now that, that you don't, you don't wish that on your worst competitor oh. on their worst yeah. day, uh, as, especially in, in any situation like that. And, 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 and for that to happen there was, oh, man. I mean, the, the, wor the worst timing ever. Oh. Uh, but, you know, they, they uh, DeWalt, to their credit, um, you know, th I, I saw an interview with their president or vice president of outdoor power equipment or something like that later on. Uh, and she was at the show and, and she just said, Hey, this is a prototype. Uh, they're not out in production right now and we'll perfect it. We'll, we'll take it back to the lab and we'll perfect it, perfect it. Uh, which is probably the right thing to say. Um, I personally probably wouldn't have said anything, but that's okay. You know, be like, Bruh. Hey, we're, we're, we're just going to look at it and, and see what happened. But I can tell you that, you know, then the question became, well, is that going to put a damper on electric? And I don't see that it does. Uh, I mean, maybe some people will be kind of skittish of it uh, because of that. But um, the fact that it was a prototype probably meant that it was, I mean, I'm just speculating here. It probably meant that it was just hand built and just something got crossed wrong. Um, and the only thing with the prototype that I'd say is they, now I'm not hating on them or nothing here, but they say that afterwards, but I bet when they were showing people that they're like, Hey, check out this new badass battery powered mower we got you know they're not saying hey look at this prototype that's just uh, yeah. you know they probably weren't presenting it that way um right. and so right. then when it happens then that's what they say but then that's yeah. what you say yeah well the, and the question is is if you are a battery person you better get some good fire extinguishers because my understanding is they had to bury that thing yeah they buried it overnight <laughs> <laughs> really yeah no yeah that's that, that stuff. Well, is, we were there actually. We were at so Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and some good insurance, <laughs> quite <laughs> frankly. Um, I mean, but, I mean, we're laughing about it. I mean, it is, it, it is unfortunate. <sighs> oh, super unfortunate. It sucks. It's really, yeah, I'm not it's laughing really sad that that I mean, would happen to but, any manufacturer, right? Right. It, and I'm being and, serious as far as the fire extinguisher, from my understanding, I'm like sure, your normal yeah. fire extinguisher. Yeah. No, it's, will not it's a, touch that battery fire it's totally a uh, i mean it's not like a cell phone it's, it's mm -mm. you know the battery's a little bigger than that it's well like there's a yeah there's energy. a reason that they that they tell you that you can't take your lithium ion battery packs on a on a plane right yeah. so um because it's they're it's that potentially dangerous um but that's one thing flying versus you're on the ground uh i can tell you that you know the the electric conversation is i mean it's not it's not going to go away. This, this is not, this is not going to uh, cause the entire electric conversation to go up in flames. Okay. To, to, to just yeah, no. down the joke, the, it, it, if anything, it will spur that sector of the industry to make it even more uh, reliable and safe. And that's actually not a bad thing. Um, the fact that it was so public and so visible and uh, so widely shared it's just going to make, I mean, it'll make a few people question and stand back and question whether or not they want to do it personally, but the rest of the industry is going to move forward from that, from that incident. And, um, we're probably going to see better battery, 
uh, powered equipment at the in the next you know few years that are even more secure and safe. And I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that just from a hopeful hopefulness standpoint, but I, I think truly that that's probably going to have uh, a a spurring effect of of innovation and and uh, and just making it better. I can tell you that you know we are. Uh, from our perspective, we are exploring the possibility of what electric looks like for our, uh, for our company. Uh, the, the thing is though, that right now it comes down to the balance between, uh, runtime and charge time and, uh, power output. So yeah. you've got to balance that. And like I said earlier, our number one seller is a 25 horsepower diesel. Right. That was one of the things that we had, uh, one of the conversations that we had last year when California, you know, first announced their ban was, that was, that was our conversation was how, how is something like that going to affect commercial end users when you're talking about, you know, batteries and uh, I mean, are you going to be less productive? In California, yeah, uh, it's, it's a crazy, it's, it's hard. It's, uh, that, that state is hard um, because there's so many varied, uh, so many, just like anywhere, but, but there's a lot more, uh, there's, a, a, there's a lot more ho- homogenous of a customer base in North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, mm-hmm. you know, the plains through the Midwest than there is in California. I mean, in California, you've got the, the coastal urban cities, which barely probably have any lawns at all. Uh, if anything, they're, they're postage stamp. Uh, and you could take one or two passes with one of our mowers and be done. Uh, it's almost, you know, ridiculous to, to think that you would m- mow uh, urban Los Angeles with one mm-hmm. of our machines or one of the machines okay. that what we make. So an electric mower uh, with a smaller deck size, with a small, with a shorter runtime, not doesn't need as much power because the grass there is not going to be as uh, formidable as it would be, say, in uh, eastern Kentucky at the height of spring. Um, so th- that market there but then you've got interior california which which is really more like uh your your dakotas or or the plains where the, there's a lot more spread out acreage uh there's a lot more irrigation or there has been uh up to this point you know they're they're suffering from from a, a real severe drought out there but the uh, you know the mowing needs are a lot different in the interior of california than the than the coastal or urban areas so yeah. i can see I mean, California is just no, no offense to anybody out in California, but California is just kind of wacky with their regulatory system. Uh, that's what makes it so difficult because they're constantly changing the goalposts. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we used to be able to sell gasoline mowers into California and then it was okay. Only down to a certain size. And then it was none at all. So we can only sell diesel out there. And, and what we're selling out there is to like Los Angeles County school system, um, your larger uh, farming uh, operations and vineyards out there. So mm-hmm. uh, for the average homeowner, electric, an electric push mower or a robotic electric robotic mower is probably <laughs> exactly what they need. Yeah. Right. The, the uh, Rose Bowl superintendents, um, we had them on the show and they, uh, to get around the no gas engines or on ozone days, they would use diesel engines and that would, that would get the pass. So. Yeah. yeah. That's the, ma- that's the amazing thing uh, about, <sighs> That's the amazing thing about diesel is that as, as a fuel, uh, even though it's still a fossil fuel, it's so much cleaner than, and most people don't think about it that way because they see that big old locomotive, they, they've got this idea in their head of the, that big old locomotive going down the railway or that big old truck. <laughs> road, rolling coals, baby. Rolling coals since 1960, <laughs> you know, and and just black smoke billowing, yeah. billowing out, and they, that's that's their version or their 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 conception of what diesel is, and that that is not what diesel is now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I think that anybody who knows anything about uh, that that type of of, uh, of engine system is going to know that one, it, it consumes about half as much fuel as any other combustible fuel source and they've they've done such a good job of reducing the sulfur content uh and making those uh engines perform at such a clean level i mean you're not going to want to like 
breathe the exhaust fumes coming out of the, the, the tailpipe, but it would be, you'd be better off doing that than off of a gas engine. Uh, if I, you know, so the, I mean, don't do that. Don't do that at home. Um, <laughs> the don't bad idea. Home. But the, the, the point is that. It's actually it, clip that out and put that on a reel. No. <laughs> so, it's so clean. It's so much cleaner. Uh, and yeah, so you can, you can use a diesel engine on a no zone action day when you couldn't otherwise use a, a gas engine. Um, you know, and, and the other, the other quote unquote dirty secret of electric is it's that, that electricity has to come from somewhere. And more yeah. than likely that's coming from a coal fire Mm -hmm. uh, power plant somewhere where you're not even thinking about it. You're just plugging it into the wall. Yep. Um, I mean, it could be coming from nuclear or hydroelectric or whatever, but, but more, it's coming from somewhere else. It's, it doesn't just get generated, you know, out of, out of thin air. So that's, that's where we're at with, with the electric conversations. We've, we've got to make a product that not only lives up to our reputation as a company, uh, all those years of history, all that years of innovation, the, the durability and the longevity that our mowers are known for, uh, and, and the cut quality and the performance and reliability. But you, know, you want not only that, but you've got to have something that, you know, a battery powered engine that would at least cut as much or more potentially as a 25 or 30 horsepower effectively diesel engine. Uh, until we get there, I, I mean, until we get there, that's, that's, you know, once we get to that point, then, okay, all the combustion uh, fuel engines are, are going to be on the wayside, but we'll start naturally the, the conversation would, we would start small. We would start yeah. with a smaller mower for like a residential market or a real niche market or something like that. And then we would grow into it. Uh, the question is, you know, it just comes down to what exactly and when. Cool. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that's waiting a little bit, feeling it out. No, and if 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 the indication or if if uh, if you get any sense of how we do things when it comes to product development and launch, uh, we like to take our time. That's <laughs> not a bad thing. Uh, we got a lot of uh, well, let's just say we got a lot of crap back in the two thousands when we came up with our mid mount. Then I mean, we're the we were the last ones to come out with a mid mount. And then Bad Boy came out with their mid mount, and then Spartan came out with their mid mount. So it's like we're not the last ones to come out with a mid mount. Let's 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 be honest. <laughs> but uh, we were, well, we weren't the first, and we weren't the first to come out with a stand on. I mean, Wright did that back in the nineties. Um, so, but we we waited to to do it right. What we what we felt like was the right design for our brand. So we're going to do the same thing when it comes to electric. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's, uh, we had somebody, uh, I think Lucky Green asked about Lawn of the Week in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we decided to, to forego Lawn of the Week this week. Um, we, we get, it's winter time. Um, submissions are, are a little uh, thin here lately. So, uh, you know, no, no, uh, no hard feelings, but, um, you know, we're going to keep looking. And, uh, you know, if we see something that catches our eye next week, we'll bring it back. Um, but, you know, for those of you that, that uh, you know, aren't familiar, uh, KOTG Lawn of the Week, when you're doing your, your posts or reels on Instagram, uh, use that hashtag KOTG Lawn of the Week. We all follow the hashtag. We're looking at it throughout the day, uh, shooting pictures back and forth. Obviously, uh, you know, spring, summertime, there's a lot more people showing off their yards than there is right now. Um, so that's when the competition gets really stiff. But, uh, you know, if you got some, some snow on the ground or, you know, we were, we had some Christmas, uh, some Christmas lights, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, get, get creative in the winter time. Um, and if something catches our eye, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring it back next week. But if you are a KOTG lawn of the week, you get eternal bragging rights, uh, drunk long guy, the president will, will bring you into the fold, uh, mm -hmm. get you into their discord chat, uh, let you hang out with the guys and you get, uh, the winner also gets a, uh, their choice of pro Pete or fossil, uh, fertilizer products from uh, from John. Those guys over Pro Pete, they've been longtime contributor, supporter of us. Um, and anything you can find uh, on Home Depot, the 25 pound bags, your choice of uh, you know uh, greens grades, fairway grade ratios, um, all that kind of stuff. So whatever you you would fit in with your needs, um, that that's yours from them. So um, you know use that hashtag. Uh, KOTG lawn of the week, and we'll be looking out for you. Um, don't do it in a story because those will disappear. And sometimes we don't, we don't catch your video or your picture until after the fact. So um, keep it in a reel or in a post that way we can see it uh, in perpetuity and you can have eternal bragging rights. 
Yeah, and you guys got to get creative because well, I mean, literally the only posts that we got this week were a couple of people that grow grass in a cup and then repost from some other accounts that used our hashtag from the fall and spring. So get creative, you know, stripes on a driveway with the snow or, you know, snowmen with KOTG in the snow or something, you know, stuff like that or, uh, Hell, throw some stripes in your in your uh, uh, living room or something. I don't know. Use the hashtag. You know, yeah. what do dads do when it's cold and there's nothing to do outside? Throw them in your Make living room. Make a case, jump into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jump out of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike, so. this has been awesome, man. Thank you for uh, agreeing to come on and telling us about your company and, like, what you guys are doing, uh, yeah. you know, Absolutely. in the game. I learned a lot listening to you and. Well, Congrats. hopefully, hopefully, it, yeah, hopefully it was beneficial to, to everyone else watching as well. Yeah, for Thank sure. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. This was great. Yeah. No, that was really awesome. I, I agree. I learned a lot and that was cool to uh, just talk about the mowers. Yeah, that was fun. Holy, Holy, uh, uh, who do we got for next week? Earthworks for home. Ooh. So we'll have Jack Higgins. One of their agronomists talking to us. And I actually pulled some soil samples today. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they'll be back in time for Tuesday's show. We can actually look at uh, like my field versus my front yard and um, see how their soil tests look on, you know, on paper. They're extremely helpful as far as the links, the information, you know, why you need what and what you're looking for. I mean, so, in their soil test are done, you know, I don't think it's no secret, but their soil tests are done by Logan Labs. Mm -hmm. So it's actually done by a laboratory. And then they kind of present it to you with their recommendations and analysis and stuff to kind of help guide you, it sounds like. to, to what Yes, you sir. That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. to. And see, I've always answer. used, I've, I've used Logan Labs for a while and, um, you know, talk to them about the results. But this is pretty cool because... They email it to you, and then you have, you know, everything in front of you color-coded with links and descriptions and studies of, you know, what you need and what you don't need. Uh, so Earthworks for Home is going to help us get our lawns in shape and worthy of a grasshopper mower to get on it one of these days. There you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But yeah, look, looking forward to next week again. Thank you, Michael, for taking time yeah. out tonight and thank you. getting on awesome here. Episode. Very informative. Uh, yeah. Live chat was loving it. A lot of people talking about it. Abigail was great. You guys should send her some <laughs> candy. Or had her long <laughs> <email. laughs> Send her a hat. We love we love Abigail. She's great. She actually uh, she came to to uh, Expo this year uh, with the express purpose of researching our brand and uh, seeing what other uh whether she had already gotten a mower uh 725 diesel but she came in and she wanted to see what else we had so we talked about implements we talked about the stand on we talked about other things and and actually it was funny she she bought a a blade i believe a, a snow blade and um oh somebody somebody mentioned some comment on uh on her instagram about snow or whatever and uh, she said oh we don't really get a lot of snow here and then which just within the next couple of weeks of that, she, she <laughs> was posting these videos of this, that storm that had hit. And it just, it looked like, it looked like a uh, stinking Newfoundland, you know, it looked <laughs> like crazy what, what they were doing with them. It was like, Oh, you don't get a lot of snow. Do you? So it's like <laughs> perfect timing. And, but we love, we love Abigail. She's, she's, yeah. she's been a great uh, brand ambassador for us. I mean, I say that loosely, um, <laughs> uh, but she's been a great, um, uh, advocate, let's put it that way for our brand and, and all of our, our customers are the same way. I mean, any company that you, uh, like say personally, I own a Mastercraft boat and I will never own any other kind of boat. Yeah. Uh, and so I will tuck Mastercraft up all day long. Uh, I own a grasshopper, but I work for the company too. So you got to kind of take my, you know, uh, take that for what it's worth. But, uh, we really appreciate the people that, that buy our products, use our products, talk us up, um, and if you anybody do wants, uh, fishing or wakeboarding on your mastercraft, uh, wakeboarding, wakeboarding. Yeah, buddy. and surf, right. we actually, we actually do this. this oh, thing. do you do? Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. Well, just uh, so you know, uh, Michael, a lot of people are 
talking about your beard too. They see you have an amazing <laughs> beard. We got we got some guys on the show or on the uh, live chat that are beard fanatics. They have their own beards and they <laughs> want to give you a shout out for an amazing beard. Boy, I appreciate that. Thank you it's very much. Good fertilizer in there. It takes some, <laughs> <laughs> it, takes some it takes some work. Actually, does I mean it, it? You just have to get you have to get past that. Uh, you have to get past that itchy phase and then once mm. you once you get past that which lasts for a couple of weeks i'll be honest i mean you get to the point where you're almost ready to shave it off and then you can just push through you'll get there you get to the point where it doesn't itch anymore and right. uh you're off to the races to see how long it can get but um yeah no i appreciate everything that you guys that you guys do this has been fun i i would be remiss if i didn't say if you want to get a grasshopper mower you got to buy one from a dealer so you got to go to grasshopperdealers.com find your local dealer and get I was going to mention that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where else can, uh, cause I know Abigail. So shout out to her. She's at Hannah Grace gardens on Instagram, but where can uh, people find you guys on the social medias? Uh, on Instagram and TikTok. We're not as active on TikTok, but on Instagram it's uh, at grasshopper mowers uh, on Facebook for some weird reason. When we set it up to begin with, I think there was like some character limitation on Facebook or, or whatever it's it's a uh, grasshopper mower without the e in in mower so it's grasshopper mm. mow r uh <laughs> and then we also have a twitter but twitter's a dumpster fire don't get on twitter right <laughs> uh, you know you could find us there too um it, i i'm the one that's checking the the social media stuff so if you send me a message if you send us a message you're gonna you're gonna be talking to me so um i'd love to hear from anybody uh, that was that was here tonight if there's any follow-up questions and yeah hit us up on social or check it check it out at the local dealer awesome all right, right thank you again thank you awesome. all the live chat for showing up once again we appreciate you guys coming in each week and uh, we got a great show next week so we will see you then all right bye Thanks, everybody. Everybody. That was great <laughs>